So in this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of partial derivatives and how they differ from the regular derivatives that hopefully you're familiar with. And then we're going to look at a couple of examples and visualizing them in MATLAB. So to start off with, usually when we take a derivative, we would start with a function of x and we take the derivative of that function with respect to x. So I've popped in a couple of examples here where we have the function x and its derivative is 1. And if we had the function x squared, it would go to 2x. So when we start to talk about partial derivatives, the key difference is going to be that we have a function that has more than one independent variable. So you can see here I've written it with x and y. Technically you could have as many as you wanted, so z, t, whatever, as many as you want. So that's like a multivariate function. When we take the derivative of the multivariate function, we have to specify which one of the independent variables we want to take the derivative with respect to. And that's why it's a partial derivative, because it's only taking the derivative with respect to uh, one of these um, independent variables. The other thing to note is that the notation changes slightly. So rather than writing a D, we write this symbol here, which represents the partial derivative. It's like that's what it implies, uh, rather than it just being the complete derivative like we had previously. So as a result of this um, function having two independent variables, x and y, it means that we're able to take the partial derivative with respect to x and also with respect to y. And these will be different equations. So I've got a couple of examples here. So the function um, xy is equal to x squared plus y, and the second one where it's equal to x sine y. So we'll come back to this in a second and talk about how we can find the partial derivatives. But just before we get to that, I want to quickly look at what it kind of means to get these derivatives uh, when we just have one um, variable. So if we take our first um, example, which was f of x is equal to x, if we pick a point of interest on this plot, I'm going to pick here, and put a tangent through at that point to represent the gradient, we can look at what the um, horizontal and vertical components are um, for that gradient calculation. So remember that um, the gradient can be calculated as the rise over the run. So the distance here would be the distance that we travel on the vertical axis, which we call df. And the distance here is going to be the distance on the horizontal axis, which we'll call dx. So rise over run would be df divided by dx, all right, which is what we get here. And in this case, we've got the answer that it's equal to 1. And that kind of infers that no matter which point you pick um, in terms of your point of interest, you're always going to get the same answer for the gradient. And this represents if I make a little change in terms of x, how much of a change do I get in terms of f? And the ratio here is just 1 is to 1. So if I now look in this second graph, which represents the second example, let's again pick a point of interest. I'm going to say pick here. And again, if we stick a tangent line on that, that represents the gradient at that point. And we can think about the horizontal and vertical components um, in order to then calculate the gradient as the rise over the run. So in this case, um, again, we've got f on the uh, vertical axis. So that represents this side of the triangle. And then we have x on the horizontal axis. So that represents this side. So again, we have an equation for it, which is 2x. So this time we would need to substitute in the x value to get an actual value out um, in terms of the ratio. But basically, again, it's saying that if you take a step, a small step in the x direction here, how much does it result in the y direction? Oh, sorry, the f direction. Okay, and let's assign a point to it this time. So let's say we're looking at the point x is equal to 2. If we subbed in here, we'd get that the gradient was equal to 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. So that would suggest that if you take a step of 1 in the x direction, you get an increase of 4 in the f direction. Now let's move on to these other equations which have an extra independent variable in them and think about how we could apply this kind of thinking um, onto these other graphs. So in order to get a visualization of this one here, it's going to be a 3D plot. So I would suggest that MATLAB would be easier to do that with uh, rather than trying to draw it on your own. So I've written here a program which is able to um, generate X and Y values, um, make a mesh um, across a 2D surface, and then calculate at each coordinate what the F value is and plot it. So if I run this, it brings up my plot. 
And what we can see is that this is like a parabola that kind of goes up um, and like into the page and I've labeled the X, Y and uh, F axes so you know which one is which. So essentially all it's done is it's looked at what the Y coordinate and the X coordinate is for a specific um, point and then calculated what the F value corresponding to that is. So I'm going to jump back to OneNote and try and draw on this little copy of the graph um, a very similar thing to what we did over here with the 2D kind of case. So if I start off by picking say this point here as my point of interest, I'm going to try and look at what the gradient of that point is along the X direction. So if I try and draw a tangent line in there, and we can think about what the horizontal and vertical components are in the X and the F directions. So if we were to label it similar to what we did back here, I would say that this bit corresponds to um, the distance that I move in the X direction. And since we're looking at a situation where we have more than one independent variable this time, I would write it with that alternate notation for the D. For this other uh, line here, that's looking at how we change in along the F direction. And since again we have more than one independent variable, we're going to write it with the slightly different notation. And so if we were able to take the ratio of um, F to X in this case, oh, I'll do it in black, what we would find would be the partial derivative or the gradient um, of F with respect to X. So of the F function in the X direction. Now equally, we could do the same thing in the Y direction. So let's pick a different point of interest and we'll put a gradient uh, line through it. And what we want to look at again is how much we move in the Y direction compared to the F direction. So if I try and pop that in, so I'm going to try and make a line since it's 3D that goes along here in the Y direction. And then the vertical direction is like here. So if we were to label again um, the distances, so this one here is the distance that we walk up in the y direction and since we're using partial derivatives or we have more than one independent variable, I'm going to write it with uh, the alternate notation. And this one here is how much we take a step in the f direction. So that's um, df. So if we were to take df divided by dy, that would give us the gradient function, um, or the gradient of our function uh, in the y direction. So what we can see is when we do these, um, really all we're looking at is one direction at a time. And what happens in the opposing one, so if we're considering what happens in the x direction, we don't really care what's happening in the y. And here we can see that we kind of always have the same shape, all right, if we consider along the x direction. Same thing if we consider along the y, we've always got this like a uh, straight line kind of shape happening. So this is how we can calculate our partial derivatives, we can take advantage of it. So essentially the rule is when you're taking the derivative with respect to x, it means that every other variable in the equation, in this case y, is going to be considered a constant. So for the first one, if we want to take the derivative of f with respect to x specifically, y is going to be considered a constant. So if we start with the x squared though, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So this is just our normal rule like we did back here. So x squared goes to 2x. However, all right, since y is now being considered a constant, when we take the derivative of a constant it goes to 0. So it would be 2x plus 0, which is just 2x. If we now apply the same sort of thing to the second calculation, so this time we're taking the derivative with respect to y, so that means x is being considered a constant. So when we look here, x is a constant, that means x squared is also a constant. So if we take the derivative of a constant, we know that goes to 0, and then we want the derivative of y with respect to y, which we know is just the number 1. So overall here, the derivative in the y direction would be equal to 1. And this is kind of consistent with what we can see. So in the x direction here, all right, we found that the derivative is 2x. And that was what we found back here when we had the function x squared. All right, so we're essentially just considering this um, when you look in the x direction over here. When we look though in uh, y, we had that 
essentially a y on its own and when we took the derivative it went to 1 which is consistent with just being like a straight line no matter what point you pick it's always going to have the same derivative um, in that direction which is very similar to what we had back here when we had just a straight line and we found its derivative was always equal to 1. So if we want to visualize that I'm going to go back to my code here and I've programmed it so it's going to take some cuts along the x and the y direction. So if I run it Right. What I can see is three kind of things come up. So this is my overall graph, right? And where's figure two? This one here is figure two. So what this is doing is giving me the slice of the 3D graph um, at y is equal to negative five. Okay, so y here equal to negative five. It's this part on the end. And you can see that it's definitely giving me a parabolic shape of the graph at that point. So yeah, consistent with what we saw back here in terms of like an x squared. If we then go back and have a look at our other slice, so this one's been taken at x is equal to negative 2, which is this bit on the end here, we can see it's a straight line. And I've just realized that this axis is going like back into the page. So if you want to have your axis kind of the way that makes sense, so from the negative on the left to the positive on the right, it would look like this. And we can see that that looks like a straight line with a gradient of 1. Again, this would be consistent with what we saw back here, where we had our straight line with a gradient of 1 and looking at the change in um, f and x, or in this case it was f and y. Alright, so I've just moved this down and we'll do one last example uh, where we look at calculating what um, the derivative is in the x direction and the derivative in the y direction. So if we start with looking at in the x direction, it means that everything else in the equation, so in this case the y, needs to be considered a constant. So if we were to write this as like the other way around, sine of y multiplied by x, if we take the derivative um, with respect to x, it's just going to be whatever the constant is that sits out the front. So in this case it's sine of y, again remembering that sine of y is going to be a constant value. Okay, so we would expect this to be looking like a straight line um, when we consider it in the x direction. And we'll check that in a moment. So for this second one, we want to take the derivative with respect to y, which means that x now needs to be considered constant. So if x is constant, all right, that's just a number that sits out the front. And then we want to take the derivative of sine y with respect to y. And we know that sine goes to cos when we take the derivative. So overall, we'd expect this to look like x cos y. And since x is a constant, all right, it just should look like a cos wave with an amplitude of x. So if we go and visualize it, again, I've written myself a code um, which is going to be able to show me what the surface looks like overall. So if we run that, this is what it is. Okay, and again, I've labeled the x, uh, y, and f axis. So let's say I want to look, first of all, in the x direction. All right, we can see just by looking at that edge, it looks like it is a straight line. So I think I've done a cut here where I look in the x direction. So if I just continue this, it should bring it up. So this is showing me what the graph looks like at y is equal to oh, negative 5 which is a slice along here, all right, so y is set to negative 5, and we just look at that part. And we can see that indeed it is just a straight line, okay, and if we confirm that against what we found before, uh, we said that the derivative in the x direction should just be a constant number, and it's sine of whatever the y value is. So in this case, the one we've picked out here, y is equal to negative 5, so the gradient is whatever sine of negative 5 is equal to. And I think I popped that in the calculator, it was about 0.95. Alright, so now let's confirm this second one. So for this we want to look at what's happening in the y direction. So if I jump back to my code, um, I can take a second cut here and look at what's happening. So I'll just continue this and it brings it up. So if we have a look at what it was, this has taken a cut at x is equal to negative 5. Negative 5 is here, so we're looking at this edge. Now again, because I gave it a weird view, we've got it so that the axes aren't quite aligned. Um, so it goes from the left is now negative to the positive on the right. 
So we can see here that it looks like it's a um, sine or cos wave, I guess, at this um, point. So the derivative of that uh, function would be the opposite, so sine or cos. And we can see the amplitude of this. It looks like it's going up to about um, negative 5 and positive 5. So the amplitude of that, um, of that periodic function would be 5. And if we jump back here, um, we can see that that's kind of consistent with what we got. So we, here we think it's a, a cos uh, wave for the derivative, which is consistent. And the amplitude of it is whatever x is. And in our case, x was like uh, the number 5. Okay, negative five, so it would have just flipped it. So that's all I've got in terms of this video. Hopefully that clears things up for you on what you're actually doing when you take a partial derivative. Um, and there'll be another video that's got some further examples of performing these.